Mark Levin goes scorched earth after the indictment of Donald Trump. This is a document case. A document case. Is this some kind of a sick joke on the American people? Joe Biden says he never told them what to do. Joe Biden had to sign off on that's becoming a National Archives case to have it go to the Department of Justice. It's literally Master Shake, dude. My name is Shake Sula, the Mike Rula, the old schooler. You want a trick? A I don't want to hear from the legal analysts the technicalities about false statements and obstruction. This should never have been a criminal case. Willful retention of documents. Well, what's the unwillful retention of documents mean? And her hand-picked radical Democrats from these dark blue cities that you and I and 320 million other people don't get to know a damn thing about this CIA operative. A guy like me has been raising these issues, leading the battle for constitutional integrity. <laughs> it's so perfect, dude. You can't unsee it What did he do with now. the documents? Did he sell them to the enemy? No. That's why we have an espionage act. Not the trick of a president. What did he do? Did he burn them all? No. The government has all the documents back. So there is no violation of the Presidential Records Act at this point. I know for a fact that once you see that, you will never unsee that. Mark Levin, great one. Thank you for being with us. Uh, I know you got a lot to say tonight. Here's the bottom line. The Espionage Act has no applicability to this. Tell me how many people have been prosecuted under the Espionage Act since 1917 who were president or vice president up until today? Zero. Lyndon Johnson took classified information with him. He had one of his aides keep it. They put it in an envelope. Johnson said, not till I die, give it to my library. And then the library got it, and they were sitting on it for 50 years, they were told to, involving top-secret information about Vietnam and tapping the phone of Richard Nixon. Nobody remembers that. Isn't that weird? Uh, and, of course, you have the Hillary Clinton example. You know Hillary Clinton was never investigated for obstruction, uh, uh, Sean? It's not even that they, what, they didn't even investigate her. <laughs> it works every time. They didn't time. investigate her for perjury. And the evidence is beyond uh, anything that we've ever seen with a former Secretary of State, she wasn't even a former president. The Presidential Records Act doesn't even apply to her. It's called the Presidential Records Act. People come on their, uh, the TV oh, he's and starting they say, to get, he's powering well, he up. needs to have the law applied to him as it would anybody else. No, it's called the Presidential Records Act because he is the executive branch. He's the executive branch. His power comes from the Constitution. He is a third branch of government. Him, he alone, everything else flows from him. And this precedent that people are talking about, people need to pay attention to this. This was an Obama judge trying to help Clinton in 2012, and the Department of Justice should know all about it. And so should the National Archives. It was the case involving the Sox and Judicial Watch. Now, what happened? <laughs> Bill Clinton keeps these tapes, which have highly classified information on them, in his sock drawer, which is a little different than Sandy Berger, who kept them in his pants. But nonetheless, he kept them in his sock drawer. <laughs> then he retires. He's a former president. So it gets in front of this Clinton judge, Jackson, in Washington. And what does she say? She reads the law, the presidential <laughs> records act, not it the espionage perfectly. act, or Clinton would be doing 50 years with his wife by now. No. He re she reads the presidential records act. She says the responding agency, the National Archives, the tapes were Mr. Clinton's personal records, therefore not subject to the Presidential Records Act or the Freedom of Information Act. The government's position was that Congress had decided the president and the president alone decides what is presidential record and what isn't. This is why they want to keep talking about the Espionage Act. It's what's in the possession of the president, not whether he created it or not, 
not whether the vice president created it, not whether the the uh, staff created it. The president gets CIA information. The president gets all kinds of information. It comes into the Oval Office, some of which he might create, most of which he doesn't. One other thing. <laughs> I have a question. And one other question for Merrick Garland. What the hell is it going to take you, pal, to appoint a special counsel against Biden? Allegations of bribery, 17 potential tapes. And yet, you know what, Sean? The attorney general knows all this. The FBI didn't turn this stuff over without briefing the attorney general. They have a very big table. I think it's on the fifth floor, and he sits there, and they tell him what he's going to do. Fengali Even the brief pauses are perfect. And the deputy attorney general is this Fengali behind the attorney general. It's the wrong law. No president's ever been charged with violating the Espionage Act. 1917, Woodrow Wilson was president. He got this law passed, and he imprisoned 2,000 people including Eugene Debs, who was the socialist running for president. And he ran for president from prison and got 6% of the vote. Wilson was a segregationist and a racist. Joe Biden was a segregationist and racist. So there you True. have it. A former segregationist and racist and a past segregationist and racist using the Espionage Act to try and destroy our country. I'm done. Huh?